The early years of the 20th century saw the first commercial records released, so you had shellac discs and also wax cylinders, although the disc won the day eventually. Now, recording was completely acoustic, that is to say, shouting down a horn which inscribed the vibrations onto the medium. So not only was it susceptible to a lot of surface noise of the, of the actual record or the wax cylinder, but also the frequency range was, well, wasn't there really. So things like brass instruments could be captured to some degree of fidelity and some woodwind instruments, but not strings. They weren't powerful enough and it also didn't reproduce those sort of high frequencies that you would desire from a violin. How'd you do it then? Let's have a look. So what we've got here then is a strovile. Now there's a guy called John Stroh in 1900 came up with the idea of basically making a violin louder and it is loud, it's really loud. What I'm gonna do before I describe a bit more about this is to play my acoustic violin just so that you can hear the difference. So you can hear that this is, there's a bit more top end on it, but actually that was the bit that you couldn't get on the recording machine. The other one had much, much more mid range, which is what you could actually capture. So what happens here then is we've got a standard piece of wood for your violin neck and the scroll and everything. We've got this little piece here, which is basically where the body of the acoustic violin would have been, so that when you're playing higher up, you can actually feel where you are because your hand would actually rub against the body of the violin. Now the horn here, how's that connected? How does this work then? Well, the bridge here, which is a conventional bridge, sits on top of this sort of metal axle here, which itself has got a little spike uh, that runs the length of it, so that the whole thing is held into the piece of violin without actually being physically attached. It was able to move. That's really important because we want all the vibrations from this to go down this metal piece here and then into the axle, into the diaphragm. So this is basically like a gramophone record needle, essentially. It just picks up vibrations and then is amplified from this and then it comes out through the horn. Now we've got here uh, this other little piece here, and that's actually the horn for the performer to monitor themselves. So it's a sort of very basic, sort of early 20th century in-ear monitoring. So you just adjust this piece so that you can hear basically what's going on. It's not very loud. You won't deafen yourself with this, but. If you're playing in an orchestral setting and you imagine loads of these together, it's gonna to make a right noise. You need actually some monitoring here. We've got a shoulder rest here so that you don't have to have a, a separate shoulder rest. It is slightly unbalanced. You know, when you're playing a, a normal uh, sort of wooden violin and you pick one of these up, it does take a little bit of getting used to. But actually this really did solve the problem. And not only the violins made, he made violas, cellos, like a cello with a massive great horn coming out of it and a double bass with a, you know, it's just to amplify these things, just to make them heard. And so what we've got then is a very, very simple solution to actually quite a big problem. Now, when electrical recording came in in 1925, roughly, uh, there was no longer the need for these because actually in 1925 there were mics, there were valve amps, there was a massive increase in fidelity. You could now hear five to six, even more kilohertz, which would actually pick up things like guitars and violins and all of the high frequencies that you would want to hear. So these gradually fell out of favour, but there were actually there's a, quite a resurgence with these, mostly in the Balkans of all places. So there's a Romanian company that make these. And actually, there are quite a few homemade kits. Somebody's actually made one out of a gramophone stylus and uh, integrated uh, diaphragm and actually made something quite successful. So it's a really good solution to a problem. It also means when you're busking on the street and lots of buskers in Europe do play these, you can actually be heard from, you know, that if you're standing sort of three rows back, you can hardly hear that busker. But if you've got this, it's going to be much, much louder. <laughs> 